Good morning. Welcome to church this morning. If you have not been here before, a special welcome. This is our new summer schedule, and we're excited for summer. If you have your bulletins, read them over, but I will uh, give highlight to the congrats to the grads. There's a couple, so Jackson Friesen from grade 12, and Deanna Friesen from U of M, and Tyson Peters from Red River uh, College, so way to go. And if there's anyone here that's graduated from something and you're not here regularly, congratulations to you as well. But I will let you read the rest for yourselves there. And I'm going to read Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. If the ushers would want to come forward for offering, then we'll have a time of prayer. And there's also a pastor change for today. Uh, Anthony Giesbrecht was on the bulletin, but we've got, uh, we've got Elisha Gertzen here. So thank you. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this morning. Thank you for allowing us to gather together to worship you and to uh, sing songs um, with fellow believers here. We just pray that uh, you would lead, guide, and direct our service, Lord. We thank you for Elisha. We thank you for Zach as we um, lead this service. Help us to uh, bring honor and glory to you. Lord, we thank you for the, the graduates this year. There's a few of them listed in the bulletin, and it's an exciting time of year, and they look forward to uh, what you have for them in the future. As uh, summer is here now, Lord, we, or the summer holidays, we just pray that you would be with the families and, and individuals as we um, do different things. Uh, may it be a, a joyful time. Keep us safe, and uh, may we be honoring and glorifying to you in all that we do. Lord, we also want to take up an offering this morning. We ask that you bless the gift as well as the giver. We pray these things in your name. Amen. There'll be a couple of videos at this time as well. Some promo. Manitoba churches with a couple of opportunities. Rosa River Bible Camp is now accepting applications to their Equip program. Equip runs from September 17th through till May 2nd and provides a year of Bible training and mission exposure for young adults. If this interests you or would be of interest to someone you know, you can contact Matt Wall at Rosa River Bible Camp using the email address at the bottom of your screen. Midway Bible Camp welcomes volunteer groups of all ages to come and help them clear and prepare their new camp location. If you know how to use a chainsaw, operate a skid steer, swing a hammer, hold a weed eater, carry and stack wood, or feed hungry volunteers, then you are qualified. Sign-up sheets can be found in the back of your churches, or you can contact the mission board or myself for more information. Kevin and Maria Martins are coming to visit their family in the steinbach niverville area for a few weeks in June and July. While they have a place to stay, they are looking for a vehicle they can borrow for their time here. If any of you have a reliable vehicle you can spare, please contact myself or the mission board. On behalf of the CMC missionaries and the Board of Missions, I'd like to thank you all for your continued prayers and support. Another hot one out there. Temps reaching over 100 degrees today. Hope you're keeping cool and having fun on this hot summer day. Now, let's get back.
Hey, good morning, church. Welcome here this morning. I'm going to start with a special number this, this morning. It's called God is with us. Um, we probably all asked this question before, where is God? You know, sometimes we go through things and, and difficult things in life and we don't, we don't see God visibly. We don't always necessarily feel his presence and sometimes we ask this question. But God is with us. He is always with us and he hasn't left us. You can remain seated. If you know the song, I, I encourage you to sing along. Um, but yeah, you can remain seated for this song and then we'll continue after. Where is God in the heartache? Where is God in the fear? Where is God when it hurts so bad that you can't hold back the tears? Where is God in the sickness that the prayers didn't fix? When it don't make sense, where is God in all of this? He is right here where he's always been, never left and he never will. Where is God? God is with us. He is right here where he's always been, it's where he'll be till the very end. Where is God? God is with us. Where is God in the ashes of a broken home? Where is God when we lose the ones we love the most? Where is God in addiction when you've lost the battle again? When it's all too much, where is God in all of this? He is right here where he's always been. He's never left and he never will. Where is God? God is with us. He is right here where he's always been. It's where he'll be till the very end. Where is God? God is with us. We might never know the answers, we may never know the outcome, but we know Jesus, we know Jesus. Even when we face the darkness, we know better days are coming, cause we know Jesus, we know Jesus. He is right here where he's always been. He's never left and he never will. Where is God? God is with us. He is right here where he's always been. It's where he'll be till the very end. Where is God? God is with us. Where is God? God is with us. Where is God? God is with us. And God, we thank you for your presence among us. We thank you that you are here through the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence. We've come to meet with you, come to worship you, and give you the honor and glory this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll invite you to stand if you'd like. As we continue to sing, we'll sing, How Great Thou Art. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. 
I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. How great Thou art! Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art! How great Thou art! When through the woods in forest glades I wander And hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur And hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art. How great Thou art! And when I think that God His Son not sparing sent Him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing He bled and died To take away my sin Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee How great Thou art How great Thou art then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation, and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration, and there proclaim, my God, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art. How great Thou art, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb 
In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion Declare the grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declare the grave has no claim on me. Jesus, yours is the victory. Oh, hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ. My living hope, Jesus Christ, my living hope, oh God, you are my living hope. Hebrews 12, verse 28 to 29 says, Therefore let us... Be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. God is our, he is our friend. He is present with us. But he's also a God uh, to be feared, a God to be, to be respected. And we need to be in reverence and awe of him in his glory and his majesty. Let's sing together Revelation song.
Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is He. Sing a new song to Him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Clothed in rainbows of living color, flashes of lightning, rolls of thunder, blessing and honor, strength and glory and power be to you, the only wise King. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Filled with wonder, awestruck wonder, at the mention of your name. Jesus, your name is power, breath and living water, such a marvelous mystery. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Amen. You can have a seat. Morning. As it was already said, I am not Anthony. Um, something came up, so Anthony cannot make it here this morning. Um, I am Elisha Gertzen. If you don't know, I come from Grunthal, the same place as George, if George ever tries to hide that he's from Grunthal, which I don't think he does. Um, um, and I'm here with my lovely wife, Sariel, and my little daughter, Elizabeth. Um, we're very happy to be here. 
and uh, to worship the Lord with you this morning. We're going to be in Hebrews if you want to follow along, um, but let's uh, start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace. Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit and the gift of your scripture that we get to read it and read words of life, uh, correction and encouragement. And now as we dive into it, Lord, would you soften our hearts and would the Spirit be at work in all of our lives and our hearts that we would accept what you speak to us and... uh, not harden our hearts. Amen. All right, we're going to be in Hebrews chapter 1. So right in the beginning, 1 verses 1 to 3. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom he made the universe. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of majesty in heaven. Uh, Jesus is God's spokesperson. I should say, if you have your camera rolling, I'm going to walk back and forth. I noticed you tried to follow this guy before. I don't know if you're filming or recording it, but I'm probably going to pace, so it might be best to zoom it out. Um, Hebrews was written to the Hebrews, kind of judging by the name, and the content. It's written to people who knew the Old Testament very well, and they, they thought very highly of the Old Testament. Moses, Abraham, David... They thought highly of angels. When an angel spoke, they believed it was from God. There was high value placed on those things. But as it says in these final days, or in these last days, God spoke through Jesus. Some of you might have uh, Bibles that have red letters in them. Those are recorded as the exact words of Jesus. And we get to read the words of Christ. And the author of Hebrews, if you want to sum it up real quick, is trying to explain to his original uh, listeners that Jesus is better than the Old Covenant. He's better than Moses, he's better than Aaron, he's better than David, he's better than, than all of those. All of those people were, in a way, a small little picture of Jesus. And he says, God spoke through the prophets, Jeremiah, Isaiah, all those people. But now he's spoken to us through his son. So why why listen to his son? That's that's pretty much why, uh, what he's he's asking or trying to explain. He says, "Why, why do you listen to him? Well, I'm going to pick three ways or three reasons why we listen to people or listen to anything in general. One, what they say is true. Two, they have experience and or knowledge on a topic, in their trade, whatever it is. They know what they're talking about and they have experience. Three, you want what they have or you like who they are. For example, the first one, what they say is true. You don't listen very long to a liar. You might listen to someone for a very long time and then you realize that half the things that come out of their mouths, their mouth is not true. It doesn't last, when you check it against other things, it doesn't hold up. They double back on what they say. It, let's say you go want to invest some money. So you go talk to somebody, say, hey, I want to invest some money. Um, how is the best way of doing that? And they tell you one way, and you go, okay, let's check. And you check it, and you go back to them, and you say, I don't know if that's, that's not what I was told by somebody else. And they twist their words, and they twist their words. And Well, you're not going to trust somebody that tells you wrong things. Because you're taking something that's valuable, a chunk of money, and you're saying, 
How do I make it, in this case, grow? And they say, and they give you an inadequate answer. Well, you go, well, then this valuable thing is going to diminish instead of grow. So, of course, I'm not going to talk to you. So, you're going to let it be. You don't listen to someone who lies. You might listen once or twice, but eventually you figure it out. Number two, they have experience or knowledge in what they do or in an area. Um, my dad was a mechanic for 22, 25 years, something like that. Um, so whenever I have vehicle problems, I'm not a mechanic by any stretch of the imagination. But every time I have a question, I go to my dad. I don't call the shop and go, hey, how much does it cost to fix this thing? I call my dad and say, hey, can I do it at your place? And how much do car parts cost? How much time would it take? Can I do it? Should I do it? Or can I just leave it as it is and run it as long as possible? And I listen to him because I've seen him since I've been this big fixing our vehicles, fixing other people's vehicles, and they've run. And when they break, he gets out and he fixes it and it runs again. You listen to people who have experience. The same thing goes if um, I try and bake something. It doesn't happen. My wife does all of that. I, uh, I'm not gifted in that area. So if I were to bake something, I would ask her. Or, but she would likely just tell me to figure it out because she's tired of me asking her ridiculous questions about baking. Um, but I'll, I'll go back. When I was in high school, when I still lived at home, I would ask my mom. i go, Mom, this is, this is what the recipe says but I know that you've twisted it before and it tasted far better. What do I do? So she, she would inevitably, well, as my mom does, she half takes over and does it for me, unfortunately. But you talk to people who know what's up, okay? So why listen to the sun? Why listen to Jesus? Why come to church? Why read your Bible? Why read good books about the Bible? Why listen to your parents who know Christ or your grandparents who know Christ? Well, let's look at what the, the text says. What does the Bible say? If we listen to people who tell the truth, we know God is trustworthy. We know that God does not lie. It says later in Hebrews, it's impossible for God to lie. When God says something, it happens. Not always the way we think it will. Often we think it works, should work one way, and God says not quite. He knows what's going on. Who knows more about the world than the eternal, everlasting God who created it all? Why would you go, let's say, to... Now, I want to be clear. I'm not knocking. Um, counselors, or, counselors are fantastic. I've been to a counselor. But would you go to a counselor who does not know God to ask them about marriage when God is the one that designed it, built it, created it, came up with it? Why would you ask somebody who's mostly trustworthy for advice on dating? Yeah, they have good ideas, but do they line up with the Bible? Do you, when it comes to running a business, now there's fantastic people out there that, that know business and stuff, I don't. But when it comes to basic foundational rules of, let's say, business, not necessarily the numbers, 
but people, honesty, integrity. Why listen to somebody else who does not know how the world fundamentally operates? Verse 2, but in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, Jesus, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. He made it all, not just the ground we walk on. He made each and every one of us. That I think every one of you would agree with. At least I hope so. And if he made each and every one of you, does he not know the absolute best way for us to operate? And does he not know the best way for us to be fixed? The world is broken, that's pretty clear. You don't even have to look at the news. Most of us just have to walk into our house on a bad day and go, we need help. Listen to the one who speaks. Listen to the one who made it all, who knows it all. He knows how the world spins. We can come up with good explanations. So for those of you who are anxious, stressed out, for whatever reason it may be, relationships, money, Remember to listen to what God is saying. God isn't saying the exact same thing to each and every one of you, because we're all different, going through different points in life, because I'm 26, and some people here are two years old, some people here are probably 70. Listen by reading. Listen by prayer. Listen, this is one, listen to your parents. Now, if you're in high school or just out of high school, you're probably going, I've heard that before, Pastor. Now, they don't really know all that much. Trust me, they do. You may not agree with your parents on everything, but they do have some very good wisdom. The last reason that we listen to somebody, the one I want to really focus on, is somebody has something we want or we like who they are or we... we they look appealing to us. Okay, I'm going to start off with Instagram. I don't know how many of you are on Instagram. Why do you follow people? Okay, first one, you know them, so you want to just see what they're doing. That's usually the first one. But that's not what I want to talk about. What about those people that you don't know outside of Instagram? You only know them on your phone. That's the only place you know of this person. Okay. For me, when, when I am on Instagram, it's always tools um, and trucks. That's pretty much what it is. Um, why I follow those things? Because I like tools, because I'm in the trades, and I always want to try and convince my wife that I need more. It doesn't ever work. <laughs> it, it works sometimes. Um, Trucks are fun. I drive a little tiny Ford Ranger so I can dream of anything and it's better because it's a gutless wonder. But I listen to them. Okay, it's, it's not, it, it is a visual app. You scroll and you look. But you also listen. When I'm looking at tools, I scroll, I stop, and then I read or I listen to what the person's saying about a certain tool. They go, this tool's great because of this. I paid this much for it. I don't think it's worth quite that much. And I go, okay, cool. I'll, I'll catalog that. Now, some of you go, I don't care about tools. 
Some of you care about the new fashion trend. I don't, I wear jeans and a t-shirt. And when I come up here, I wear a suit. Some of you care what the newest color is. I don't know all that much about fashion, but I'm making an attempt here. If you listen, if you're scrolling on Instagram and there's someone on there telling you that the, the new fashion season is only two weeks long and you need to update every four weeks or else you're behind, you're listening to them because you want to keep up. That's valuable to you. You want to keep up with the trends. I'm not saying that's bad. That's not my point here. What I'm trying to point out is you will listen to whatever they're saying. You may not follow up on everything, because you may not be able to update your wardrobe every four weeks. I sure can't. Maybe fashion's not your thing. Um, maybe it's things to make your life easier. Uh, kitchen appliances. My wife has a fantastic um, KitchenAid mixer. You can get countless adapters for this thing. It's really cool. You can get meat grinders and cheese, whatever you call them. You get all kinds of stuff. You go to your, your friend's place, and you're in their kitchen, you're talking, the kids are running around, it's chaos. And she takes a block of cheese, throws it in this big block of cheese that's far cheaper than the big grated bags, let's say. So she's saving money, and she drops it in this thing, and it, it um, well, shreds, thank you, wow shreds the cheese within seconds. And you go, I want that. Because instead of me trying to wrangle my kids to grade the cheese, or instead of me sitting here grating the cheese and ripping my fingers apart, it takes me three seconds to plop it in there. Where do I get it? And she tells you, oh, I bought it off Amazon, and there's even a deal on it right now, so get on your phone and buy it. And tell your husband to, that it's going to be there when, you get, when he gets home. It's funny, but you listened to your friend. You listened to someone on Instagram about the truck you should buy, about the price you should pay, about the work it should do, about the tools you need, about the fashion you want or need. You listen to your friend about the thing that makes your life easier. You listen because they're valuable, because they look appealing, whatever it is. You listen. You listen to people who speak. So, those analogies to get you to notice that you listen, when you listen to things, the things you listen to, you value. If you don't care, you don't listen. If, if as a kid, before the Lord got a hold of my life, actually when I was this big, I didn't want to listen to my mom, so I didn't. It wasn't appealing to me. I didn't want to do dishes, so... Off go the ears until she grabs one, and then they're on. So what? There's a question you need to think about. Going into summer especially, because I take it that this is probably slightly emptier than normal because it's July long. Some people are camping, fishing, seeing family. I know our church is going to be like that. It's summer. The place we live, that's the way the world works. It's freezing cold for over half the year, so when it warms up, we get to hang out and see people. What do you listen to throughout the day? You listen to your co-workers, you listen to your parents, you listen to your husband and wife, um, husband or wife, your f friends. What do they say? You listen to music, what does it say? You listen to audiobooks. What do they say? You listen to podcasts. What do those say? You listen to the voice in your head. So 
some people can't hear the voice in their head because they have kids at home. Because all they hear is screaming. So then you can forget to listen to the one who made the universe, the one who is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. You forget to listen in the chaos sometimes, which is very understandable when you have one to four kids running around. You forget, you can forget, that he sustains everything. Everything. Some of you listen to music, lots of it. I listen to a lot of music because I work by myself all day. So the silence gets uh, a little too much sometimes. But my wife can attest to this. The kind of music that I listen to directly affects my attitude. If I listen to too much hip-hop, which tends toward more angry, typically, not all of it, I can come home grouchy and she goes, cut it out, your day actually wasn't that bad. And I go, you're right. How often does the music you listen to glorify things that God absolutely hates? And you go, oh, it's just music. I don't listen to the words, I like the beat. Pay attention. Pay very close attention to your heart. When you listen to music, how do you feel afterward? Same thing goes for audiobooks. I also listen to audiobooks because music gets repetitive. What kind of audiobooks do you listen to? What do they glorify? What do they say is important? The kinds of audiobooks you listen to will give you a hint as to what your heart wants. The kind of music you listen to will give you a hint as to what the deepest part of your heart wants. Podcasts. Those are a big thing. What do they emphasize? What do, you, what do they tell you is important? All these things are screaming at you. Some of them are very good. And I'm not telling you to cut out um, secular music or audiobooks that aren't um, Christian. I'm not telling you to do that. What I'm telling you to do is to take careful stock of what they're telling you so that you can see what your heart actually wants. Because you can convince yourself that yes, I love God. Yes, I want to be like Him. And I want to tell others about Him. But then you stop and you take a look at all of your playlists and you go, that one's glorifying um, alcohol and being drunk every weekend. That one glorifies um, sex outside of marriage. This audiobook um, glorifies sex outside of marriage. These podcasts are telling me to go fight people and, and do all kinds of things I shouldn't or that I should agree with things that aren't biblical. When you look at that list on your phone, whatever it is, on a piece of paper, it's a lot harder to dismiss. And going into summer, you'll be here less possibly. So you'll hear this one less time a week. At least one less time a week. So I want you to, as it says in chapter 2, verse 1 of Hebrews, we must pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard so that we do not drift away. Brothers and sisters, take great care. 
There's a song, I forget who it's by. It's a slow fade. It doesn't happen in an instant. It doesn't happen in a weekend. It happens every morning when you wake up. Every drive to work. Every drive home. The author of Hebrews was telling people back in that day, prophets were not everything. Jesus. Jesus is the one. The Father is the one. The Son is the radiance of God's glory. Do you love the glory of God. Does it make you feel small? Glory, I've had a hard time sometimes understanding it. Exactly what it means, because I don't use glory as a word during the day. But when we see the glory of God, one thing it does do, should do, is put us in our place. The audiobooks I listen to are um, some kind of fiction. So it talks about big castles and, and fantastic cities and, and the response of the people walking in. It's always always a, a farm kid going to the, the biggest city in the world. It's always the craziest thing. And they say they feel small when they walk in. The ceilings are 80 feet tall or something, whatever. But yet they don't want to leave because it's beautiful. They feel tiny because they are. But they never want to leave because it's beautiful. Because there's strength there. The sun is beautiful and he's powerful. So yes, you will not, you may not feel as significant when you brush up against God, but it is absolutely wonderful. Let's pray. Actually, I'm going to read the benediction first and then I'll pray. Order is a little different here than my church. I'll read it out of Numbers. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Christ who is the exact representation of you. Thank you that we get to read his words and that they're so lovely. As we go into the summer, Lord, please protect us and remind us, either through other people, our brothers and sisters in Christ, through your word, uh, to sit and listen to you and to watch what we listen to that we may glorify you and uh, find you absolutely lovely. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Elisha, for sharing with us this morning. The guitar is on now. Josh is doing a good job back there. That was my fault. The guitar wasn't on. So, Anyway, I'll invite you to stand. We're going to close in song. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God forever. Let's sing together. Before the world was made, before you spoke it to be, you were the king of kings, yeah, you were 
Yeah, you were, and now you're reigning still, enthroned above all things. Angels and saints cry out, we join them as we sing, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. God, you gave me breath so I could praise your great and matchless name all my days, all my days. So let my whole life be a blazing offering, a life that shouts and sings the greatness of our King. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory. Take my life and let it be yours. So take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory. Take my life and let it be yours. We sing glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. We sing glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. We sing glory to God. peace.